Good evening. Thank you for watching our briefing in English. I'm Leah Hogg. We've had very good news this week with the Pfizer vaccine arriving in Malta and also the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine being approved in the UK. And to speak to us more about this is Professor Mark Brinkart. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Good evening, Leah. Thank you for inviting me. Um, well, this is indeed good news. Uh, as you know, we had a lot of confidence, uh, a lot of faith in the, um, in, in the Oxford vaccine, um, which is essentially a coronavirus that's derived from a chimp, a chimpanzee coronavirus, which is which doesn't cause any any, any known pathologies or disease in man, but it's been genetically modified to have a spike protein. Um, and this is different to the to the uh, to the Pfizer vaccines or to Moderna vaccines, which are just consist of mRNA for the spike protein. So there are modifications. And um, the good news is that uh, we had in summer secured something like 400,000 doses of these of this vaccine. Yes. And AstraZeneca, who owns it and has cooperated with Oxford, started producing the vaccine before the trials were completed. So they have a head start. Yes. Um, and, and um, what's, and uh, what's good about it uh, seems to be um, the temperature, which uh, it can uh, be stored yeah. in a normal fridge, I understand. Well, it, each, each one of these vaccines have got their own particular strengths. And in fact, um, um, the Pfizer and the Moderna are similar, but Pfizer needs a minus 70 degree environment to be stored. Now, that is not so difficult. Because you have to remember that, um, that in fact, uh, we saw our embryos, say, in, in, in IVF for our sperms at, at, uh, at minus 70 uh, degrees when we're doing cryopreservation. Um, and, and therefore, this is not technology that we are not able to cope with. But nevertheless, the, 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 uh, the Chedox vaccine is an, an easier vaccine to store and it's far cheaper. So it's only about $3 a shot. Um, and and um, it's meant to be the vaccine for the world. Now, it is slightly less effective than the Pfizer vaccine or the Moderna vaccine, but nevertheless, it seems to be effective enough. Now, I may see I, it, I, may I ask you? Before. May I ask you a question? In what way is it less effective? Well, I mean, studies have shown it to be possibly maybe five to ten percent less effective if given at certain doses, um, but that is not. Uh, not that significant, to be honest. Um, and, and in fact, we've now had modifications on the vaccine regime that has been suggested, whereas before, the Pfizer vaccine was going to be repeated within 21 days, with the first shot and second shot being repeated after 21 days. Now there's a suggestion from the UK that the second Pfizer shot will be repeated something like three months after the first shot. And it might very well be the case where the second shot will actually be the Chedox, the Oxford vaccine. Because the two can supplement each other um, very, very well because of the different ways how they act. Does it worry you, if I may ask you, does it worry you that people may prefer one to another? Do people have a choice? Uh, no, it doesn't worry me at all because they're all equally very, very good. Uh, what worries me is the lack of supply. We need lots of vaccines delivered very, very quickly. And, and the more vaccines we have that are effective, the better. Um, and, and the more varied ways that we can administer them is the better, because our big bottleneck right now are the numbers of vaccine available in order to gain herd immunity. That means in order to vaccinate 70% of the population. This is our big problem, because we haven't solved the infection problem. And there are variants popping up every now and again. As predicted, we had the variant turning out the UK variant turned up in Malta after seven to 10 days. This was entirely predictable, and I, I wrote this. Um, Ten days ago, um, and and um, but so far the vaccine is still ahead of the mutations that have occurred. So can I also ask you how important is it to have the second dose? Well, if you look at the Pfizer data, the first dose gives you 56% cover, but with the second dose you get 95% cover. So that's how important it is, basically. If you want to get a higher cover, then you need your second dose. Mm -hmm. But it is becoming um, it, it's becoming apparent that the second dose need not necessarily be from the same make, to be from a different make, mm -hmm. and will achieve the same aims.
Yeah. And you were going to mention the new, the new strains of the coronavirus. Does the yes. vaccine or any of these two that we're speaking about today, does that cover the new strains of, of the coronavirus? And so far, it seems, although we even more certain in a couple of weeks' time, so far it seems that, yes, yes. There's more than two strains, by the way. The South African strain, and there might be very other strains which are as yet unidentified. They'd be very surprised if there aren't minor variations here and there of, of, of the virus itself. So this is the way, this is the way things evolve. This is the way a virus evolves. But so far, uh, the vaccines that are that have been tested um, all show to still be um, uh, to be of sufficient potency, if you like. Uh, of, uh, that they're able to to create because the way they work is they 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 get your body to produce antibodies against the virus. It's it's that's the way a vaccine ha works. A vaccine doesn't attack the virus itself, it gets your body to recognize components of the virus and attack it. Um, so, so far, we were within range of that, so we're sure. quite confident. Sure. What about the rollout? I mean, we've started with the frontliners, um, then we go on to the elderly and the more vulnerable. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the rollout and uh, the effect um, of the vaccine on children, perhaps? Well, well the rollout is, is, is similar virtual over Europe, you know, you've got frontliners first. Um, we still have to determine where doctors who are also frontliners or not the government service, um, uh, where their position is. Um, and then you've got the elderly and you work down the age, various ages. And then you've got your high-risk group. So it's a very well-organized, well-determined rollout. It is, of course, dependent on the amount of vaccine available, on the numbers of vials available, literally. It, it, it now boils down to supply. Demand is huge, but the supply is, is still not there. It's still a long way away. But we've got an advantage now that we've got three vaccines where this, uh, it, it trebles our supply, essentially. I mean, it will treble is... our supply in, in a few weeks, in, in a week and a half. But it's still a long way away from what we need. Not just what we need, but what the world needs as a whole. I mean, this is a, a brilliant way to, to end the, the, the most yeah. horrible year we've had and to start the new year. Do you see this as the start of the route out of the pandemic? Well, yeah, the, the, the coronavirus vaccine is easier to produce, actually. So, so the one for the proof is easier to produce. It's very similar to Putin's one, or well, Sputnik V, I should say, and to the Chinese one. Okay, Chinese have got a similar one. Um, uh, there are other Chinese and Russian ones which are different as well, yet, yet again. So, so yes, this is the beginning of our fight back. You know, so Churchill said maybe it's the it's 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 the end of the beginning. So now we're seeing for the first time a a, a proper retaliation against the virus, a proper fight. You know, uh, so far it's been defensive. We've been defending ourselves. Now we're starting to fight here, and also with therapies. I have to add because now there are. Uh, antibodies being rolled out, antibodies produced in laboratories, as opposed to uh, antibodies produced from plasma from people who have recovered with, with their own here in danger. So we have antibodies being produced. We've got treatments also, because the other side of the coin isn't just antibodies. We've got the other side of the coin, which is which is treatment. People are there are new treatments now which are specific to coronavirus, as opposed to the general treatments that we had off the shelf, which weren't that effective anyway, to be honest. Yeah. What are your comments, Prof yeah. what are your comments, Professor, to um, those people who are rather hesitant, reluctant to actually take the vaccine? Well, I mean, a lot of it is, of course, um, uh, made-up stories, you know, fake news, we'd say nowadays. I mean, this idea of microchipping everybody to a vaccine is, is a wild story. Um, or, or we've had people joking, they say, you're going to grow a third arm, or you're going to have... Uh, you know, turn green. But, but uh, the big problem is, of course, you are worried about side effects, short-term and long-term side effects. The only thing I can say is that the disease is far, far worse, and we know it's proven to be far, far worse than anything we've seen uh, with long-term side effects, particularly in the young. Uh, and the other, of course, it either kills them or it doesn't. But um, the vaccine has not been shown and, and theoretically should not have any such potential for such long-term um, diseases on this scale anyway. So as somebody said in the New Scientist, you, you, you can either get immunized through a vaccine or else auto-immunized through acquiring the horrible disease. Now, this, is, this is the choice that we have, unfortunately. So uh, I think they should accept it just like any other vaccine. As for it being rushed through, I don't believe it has been rushed through. Actually, if anything, if I had to criticize uh, the whole system is that it wasn't rushed out 
fast enough. Not enough shortcuts were taken, but no shortcuts were taken with these with these vaccines. So I don't see any major rushing through. It's just the technology has caught up and it's such nowadays that you can actually have a vaccine produced in a year as opposed to three years. It's just and the other big factor of course was the amount of money, the vast amount of money spent in developing these vaccines. That was the factor in them being ready relatively soon. It's not that they were rushed out or shortcuts were taken. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. Very encouraging to hear this from you. I'd like to thank you um, for being a regular contributor um, with regards to the coronavirus during our programs. And just a brief message to round off the new year for our viewers. For myself, I can have a look at my dog here. Yes. She's very happy listening to you. <laughs> so the brief message is that as my dog here, is saying it's life goes on whatever happens you know we will come out of this we will come out of this for sure um, just like we've come out from other epidemics now the whole point here is not to let our guard down because really really the vaccines are not the entire solution we still have a way to go before we are safe so we've got another six months at least before we are safe so we still have to be careful uh, we've got to respect each other carry on wearing masks and 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 and, and, and uh, sanitizing because just because we started giving a few vaccines right now doesn't mean that we're out of it. Uh, the problem is still there. And it's the, it's the worst problem that our generation has faced, you know, really. Thank you, uh, thank you very said. much. Thank you very much, Professor. Okay. I wish you a By good, way, happy like new year. Thank and this you. is very good news. And I think that within six months of a year, God willing, we'll be out of it. Thank <laughs> you, Professor. Thank you. Happy okay. New Year to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That was Professor Mark Brinkart with an update on the coronavirus.